This is Design Safe Radio, where natural hazards researchers strive to make our society more resilient to everything nature throws at us. Hello, and welcome again to another episode of Design Safe Radio. I'm your host, Dan Zaner, and here with uh, my Illini comrade, uh, Frank Lombardo. Good to see you, buddy. Yeah, good to see you too, Dan. Been, been a minute since uh, we met in uh, the, the hallowed orange and blue halls in Champaign, but uh, always good to uh, see see a friendly face from my alma mater, University of Illinois, and uh, really glad to see you sporting a line eye orange. Yeah, I, I actually thought about that uh, before the interview. I, I'm not I'm not one to really dress up in the summertime. I'm uh, usually more relaxed, but I thought I'd at least uh, try to get uh, a line eye colors on today. Absolutely. Well done. So, <laughs> um, you know, it, it's funny when people think about the University of Illinois uh, back in, in Urbana-Champaign, you typically don't think wind engineering, although it is a, a hotbed for hot air blowing through, uh, you know, every year around this time, you get a bunch of thunderstorms and, and tornadoes and things. Um, so you actually lead the wind engineering research lab there and uh, also co-directing the new Extreme Wind Resilience Center. So can you tell us about some some projects that you or your storm team are studying and and some things that you guys are learning? Yeah, for sure. Uh, and it, it is related to my uh, background that you can see there. So we, um, a project I'm really interested about, we're, we're actually studying dust devils. And you might ask, uh, why you know wind engineer is is, is studying dust devils and, and what exactly is a dust devil? Uh, so it's a it's a naturally occurring vortex. Uh, you can kind of see it there in the background. This is an example of a of a dust devil hitting our our equipment, which is you can see in the background there. And it's really generated by thermal effects. So usually daytime heating, and they're usually more favorable in kind of hot and dry climates. So, um, and we went to New Mexico. We've been there. Uh, we just came back in uh, late June, uh, and we were there for three summers, 20, 2021, 2022, and 2023. Uh, and the reason why we do it is really a lot of the a lot of the studies show that that dust devils are the properties of dust devils. The properties of the vortices uh, are very similar to tornadoes, uh, but of course, typically they happen at at lower wind speeds. Um, but it turns out that uh, Things are uh, they're really easier. They're really much easier to capture uh, than than tornadoes. Um, mm. And so, as we kind of gone through our research, people ask, "Well, would you guys actually like go out and, and chase after these, or you know, you must get really lucky to just have this this dust devil pass over your your equipment?" And so, we we went out in 2021. We kind of did just did a scouting project out here in this. Uh, it's an experimental range run by the by USDA in New Mexico. So it's it's right near Las Cruces. New Mexico and we went out just to kind of scout uh for for two days we didn't bring any really equipment out and just to see if the this type of experiment would be possible and we you know we were kind of sitting out there nothing was really happening until about noon or one o'clock and these things were usually date you know generated by by the heating of the day and all of a sudden I mean there were there were dust doubles everywhere I mean it was just nonstop for for hours on end and so we thought if we just set up in a fixed spot, we would probably be able to capture a lot of this, a lot of this information uh, related to, to dust devils. So in the background, you can see kind of this, uh, if you can see it there, you can see a kind of a cube like structure there. We use that to measure wind loading, uh, not just in dust devils, but really anything, but we've kind of taken that out to measure wind loading. And we have some uh, wind instruments out there as well. You can see an anemometer here right next to the cube. We have a, we have a lot of those out there. Uh, to measure the wind characteristics. We have the cue that measures loading characteristics. And we also have small sensors that you might be able to see on the ground there. They're green, they're kind of dusty now, that also measures the the pressure. Mm. Um, and so we so this we've gone out three summers and I I, I think we're really learning a lot. We we were able to, do, for example, this year I think we have about 40 to 50 dust devil hits on ah. our instrument our instrumentation. So it's it's you know we have a lot to we have a lot to learn uh, from these, and this was a, rel a, a fairly big one um, that that hit the array about twenty meter per second wind speed. So, not not uh, you know about forty five miles per hour. So not not weak per se. It's not as strong as a tornado, of course. But uh, you know, I think we're learning a lot. I said we we we've measured wind characteristics, wind loading, uh, probably over the three years. I would say close to a hundred. 100 dust devils um and we were out for 10 days this year and we, we we think we have about 40 or 50 good hits um and so we really need to go back and analyze the data we haven't really analyzed any of it 
in detail from this year. Um, but we, you know, we do know really in a kind of a qualitative sense, especially that, you know, these wind characteristics and loading from these vortices are a lot different than, than straight line winds and, and that the wind characteristics that we capture in these events are, are very similar to tornadoes. We have a paper hopefully be coming out in the next few months uh, talking about one particular uh, dust devil that passed over our array back in, in 2021, where we really kind of just say, hey, you know, this is possible. We're able to capture these and we can learn a lot potentially about tornado loading and tornado characteristics from these dust devils, which are which are easier to capture um, and can provide a lot more detail, uh, basically, because we, we don't move the instruments. They, they, they stay fixed out there. And we just let the we just let the dust devils pass over, uh, as opposed to trying to study tornadoes specifically, where they're very intense, they're dangerous, unpredictable. You have to move to try to get in position to capture them, makes things uh, significantly harder. Right. Uh, another thing too is that we just you know the we learn a lot just by being out there. So you know we're we we're actually physically out there watching these things happen, watching them pass over the instruments. Uh -huh. uh, and, you know, visually, they have very rapidly evolving characteristics. Visually, they all look different to some extent. Uh, and some of these characteristics, when you look at the data, you know, you wouldn't believe it unless you saw it happen yourself. So I think it's good to, to go out there and see that. Um, and, you know, you could probably say the same for tornadoes, except maybe on long, longer time scales. These things usually last, you know, at least they pass over our instruments in a few seconds and they're gone. Um, the tornado's longer time scales, a stronger, stronger intensity, but I would expect a lot of the similar characteristics in, in tornadoes. Um, but one of the things too, that, that we learned is that we, we have, we haven't instrumented it densely enough. I think we, we have a lot of things out there, but I think again, these things are small Especially scale. They small, happen, yeah, exactly. They happen rapidly. They, they change quickly. And so we're, we think we, we'd love to go back out and, and do a, a, another experiment where we're actually instrumenting things more densely to try to understand, you know, how these things change so quickly and, uh, you know, kind of rapidly evolve over time and, and really try to get a summary of all the all the different properties that that we've that we've seen or that that are really, you know, kind of capable in, in these uh, vortices. Thanks for listening to today's episode of Design Safe Radio. Be sure to like and subscribe on whatever platform you happen to be listening to this on. It really helps people find our show. Thanks to our amazing sponsors, the National Science Foundation and the NARI Network Coordination Office, which is award number 2129782. Big thank you to Marty Lachance, our guest booker and topic researcher extraordinaire, and Raquel Ruiz, who is our video and audio editor. I'm your host and NARI Facility Scheduling and Operations Coordinator, Dan Zaner. We'll see you in the next episode. Until then, stay resilient.